It's an, it's an opportune moment to do so, Jamal, uh, to talk about the way that data sharing could fight this pandemic. Just to pick up Peter's uh, call there, if we can, firstly. I mean, you can understand the frustration, understand the sadness. But there is a there is a seam of refusal to believe that unless measures are taken, that we will be in, as a country, precisely the same place as other countries that have that have lost and are losing huge numbers of people to this. Yes, good morning, Peter. It is um, unfortunate um, what this coronavirus uh, pandemic pandemic has been doing um, across countries, the loss of life and the uncontrollable spread of the virus that we're seeing. However, um, as you've rightly pointed out, I believe that intelligent use of data uh, mm. by the government can actually speed up um, the fight against coronavirus. And if we take examples of other countries that have successfully used data to combat and fight it, for example, in South Korea, um, they're using data quite heavily mm. to control this and life is going on there um, quite normally. And people like Peter, your previous caller, um, if we were using data more intelligently, and if we had started to use data more intelligently, might not be in the difficult position that they mm. find themselves what kind of data is useful so it's it's mobile data um and it's it's data that's on our app so we've got companies like google and facebook who the u.s is talking to um we've got mobile data from carriers like ee vodafone 3 o2 all our network carriers and what other countries are doing is they're using that mobile data and they're cross-referencing it with patient records and they're monitoring who's coming into contact with them. And as soon as someone comes into contact with a confirmed patient, what they're telling them to do is immediately go into quarantine and they're making sure that they stay in quarantine by monitoring their movements based on their mobile data, I suppose. And in this country, we, I mean, I, I actually heard yesterday that the, the, the government, and this goes back to sort of the last three conservative governments, the last three conservative prime ministers, uh, when it comes to the use of mobile phones, for example, people have said, why are we not, why is it not possible to, to use this other way and push data the other way out to people's mobile phones? Well, that's because no government in the last seven years, despite being recommended essentially by itself to do so, has agreed to institute such a policy uh, and such a system. With it working the other way and data coming in, in the UK, is it possible to harvest data in the way that you are describing and make use of it? Well, the first thing we need to understand is the UK is governed um, when it comes to data collection and the use of data by the Data Protection Act 2018, which is a mirror image of the general data protection legislation, regulation, sorry, which came into force in Europe on 25th of May 2018. Yes. And the European Data Protection Board on the 19th of March 2020, what they said is GDPR should not hinder measures taken in the fight against coronavirus, provided that the use of that data is proportionate and limited. Now, we see in the UK, we see data privacy as a human right, just as we see other human rights, such as the right to freedom and liberty. Now, if the government thinks this is an emergency um, and it's a national emergency and we need to restrict people's movements, we need to infringe on their rights, there's nothing wrong with infringing on their privacy rights, provided it's proportionate and limited. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the benefits that we can get from using that data, I mean, Facebook has a uh, data for good um, project that they're using we can use such data to really get over this fight and you know flatten the curve and get on top of this fight and allow people to live somewhat normal lives and the, the data the, the data would be anonymous wouldn't it as i understand it so it wouldn't be a question of someone sitting in government watching a little red dot as a particular person makes their way around the the country this is about this is about trends this is about mass data but anonymous data so at the moment, um, what you would have seen in the media over the last couple of days is the government talking to uh, such companies and the U.S. is talking to Google and Facebook about anonymized data. Now, anonymized data is data that can't be attributed to an individual person. So, for example, in Kenya, they used mobile data to measure the spread of malaria and it was accurate to a few hundred meters. Yeah. Um, in California, they used that data to monitor the wildfires and people's movement. In Mozambique, they used that to measure the cholera outbreak. So we can use anonymized data to see if people are staying put but we can actually use personally identifiable data to identify patients and who they might come into contact with, just as they do in countries like Israel. 
Jamal, thank you for now. That's Jamal Ahmed, uh, who has uh, joined us live on the show, fellow of information privacy and CEO of Kaziant Privacy Experts, with um, an interesting technical solution or part solution to this or part of the solution, because lots and lots and lots of elements will form the ultimate solution to the coronavirus crisis. Um, 03456060973. This-